What's up, y'all? This is Rom coming back at you with yet another car video. Yeah. Uh, Wayne just getting the car started again. Got to watch. Be careful. I come come out where I'm at. But anyway, right? Dudes have to realize all women aren't the same, and it should seem like common sense. You know, because one of the things that I've been seeing out here is a lot of guys thinking, you know, all the women are the same. They say they all like that. They all like that. Well, let's reason for a second. Let's reason for a second. First of all, you haven't, most of the guys saying that has not dealt with a lot of women, period. How they going to say that? You ask them how many women they've been with, how many women they really been with. And how many they know, how many they talk to, be like, if you put them under a lie detector, because you know, a lot of guys will say 200, I've been with 100 women, but then they ain't thinking, well, you know, all these women are like that or something like that, you know what I mean? They ain't thinking what they really need to be thinking. You know, they don't, like in real life, lie detector, or just somebody looking at them tell they capping, can tell they only been with a few women. But no, all women ain't all women ain't like that. Cause every time I say something about women, I always uh, qualify. I always qualify. Cause there's good and bad. And then even when I talk about select and non-select, you get different. Um, the same woman, <laughs> she can treat one uh, guy as non-select, and the other one as select. But see, you get different types. See, it depends on several factors, like I always say. Like class. Shout out Master Teacher BGS. He always talks about the octane models. There's a big difference between, really, between even close octanes, like an 89 and 92. That could be a big difference. You can get an 89 uh, octane and she wants some bohemian shit, and then a 92, she wants some corporate woman shit. And, you know, it's funny. Let me say something real quick about that corporate woman thing. There's always a guy, always, will say something like, well, they'll get with blue-collar guys. As a whole, they won't. There's always an exception. There's always exceptions. This ain't perfect science. And you got to go with generalities, like, in general, what they're going to do, who they're going to get with. But, you know... It's going to be so different. Like, you can, like, if you have enough experience and you really look at the women, you can say, well, hold up. These women ain't the same. Like, you know, they got all these women, got all this stuff on, uh, like they be wearing uh, in social media. And I know a lot of guys that think, well, because of social media, they wearing that. Uh, now, if you're really looking at the women, not if you're really looking at them, because you got everything from nerd girls, corporate girls, everything. Because, like, on social media, there's a certain archetype. And, yeah, all of the women who follow that archetype will look like that and have that attitude. But all of them don't. Like I said, you got nerd girls. You got uh, women who call themselves alternative or whatever. And, really, if you deal with really upper class, upper middle class women, they'll look totally different. And really, if you know how to look at them, even on social media, you can have a general idea about their background. A general idea. Because there's always some uh, stuff like, uh, I'll use that professional woman example again. Because like I said, oh, some guys say, well, I've seen them go for uh, blue collar guys or they go for Pookie and Ray Ray. How many times have you seen that? How many times do you actually know the woman? Because then if you actually challenge them on that, you'll find that they really don't know the woman. They just assume. Because let's be real on something. It's a whole other conversation. A lot of times, a guy will call anybody, any man who look like he a man, a pookie or something. And it's like, well, you don't know that man personally. Like, I remember one time I saw, uh, I saw this video clip, and these were like upper middle class upper middle class uh, black folks and you know they doing you know that thing is like uh, you know that thing that goes around on TikTok uh, 
I'm a this, I'm a that. So they were talking about they were on the board of this golf thing. And I remember the last guy, see, the rest of them had on suits. The last guy, he had his hair braided and everything, getting out of a uh, Rolls Royce. And, you know, you first thought it might be, according to, like, how things go, is a rapper, but dude was actually a... a he owned, he actually owned a multi-million dollar business, regular business, a tax business. So you can't really tell, but then if you actually get to know the women and talk with them, you see there's differences. See, I know what I know just from my upbringing, because remember, I said I've lived in Southeast D.C., but also that was just like four years out of my life. You know, also uh, Southeast D.C., National City in San Diego. I live in poor areas. I've seen how they were. Learned some stuff. Learned how to survive. But from the age of 10 on, raised uh, with my grandparents. And they lived in a more, I say, starter bougie area. Starter bougie area. Because they had a bunch of young couples on the street. And these were professionals who would move on to bigger houses. And then high school, went to private school. And I was introduced to, like, higher class people there. So I've seen it all and I've seen the difference. One of the things I learned over the years is how to read the women, especially by class. Like really check with BGS, he's, uh, he'll talk about it. I've talked about it, BGS got more. I've talked about it privately uh, on like ROM TV and I might do something on, on demand video on class. And for any idiot who says, oh, all the class the same, they, they lie. They just don't know. It's just that simple. They just don't know. And then subcultures. And then you start seeing a difference. Religion, everything. You start seeing what's up. You start seeing who's what, where, and all of that good stuff. So, I mean, it's... it's uh, it's really you just learning. And it's like once you get out there, you deal with enough women, you say, oh, wait a minute, I see the differences. Like you can see, like, yeah, you got those IG women, but then you also got those upper class women, regardless of race. They carry themselves a certain way. You got, in general, you got to have something. Oh, and uh, I was about to get into that thing. When you do see an upper class woman with a lower class man, one, it's still rare Two, always ask where she came from. Always ask where she came from because you got a lot of strivers and stuff. They started out, they started out dealing with a certain type of man and they stick that way. In fact, ultimately, if they had their druthers, they would still deal, they would deal with a professional cat who got some hood in them. Or trailer park, whatever you want to call it. You know? Or some raiders. But they'll still want a professional. But that class thing plays a lot. It's like uh, that gentleman who uh, wrote that book, uh, Gerald Sabiro. And he, he said, and he was talking specifically about black relationships, but it really applies to all relationships. Any discussion about them that don't take class into consideration is a joke. But you also got to take subculture and everything. Now, my point with it all is all these women aren't the same. And see, a lot of times what's happening is a lot of guys are focused on the IG type of woman, certain class uh, of woman, certain class of woman that they probably ain't going to get with. Now, BGS will call like some of those women who are real fine, who uh, he call 100 octanes, they ain't going to get with most guys. If your ass ain't a, a celebrity or a baller, and when I say baller, starting price for that is a million dollars like serious money they get with the high end and they got a shelf life but then you got some corporate women but then you got some working women like just regular working class who actually regular working class women are actually the best ones they more likely to look for a man like for a partnership with a man you know, because they all going to have something different. And then, even then, you still got to break it down into their religion. Like, what is their religion? You know, and how tight, how much they going to follow? 
you know, are they fundamentalist type or are they just the type they go, they'll say they're religion but don't really follow? Because now you got a lot of, like, uh, I use an example. Now, this is big, like on TikTok, the spiritual type or women calling themselves witches and stuff, man, you might not want to deal with them. Okay, fine. But there's only a certain type of guy that they're going to respond to. Because, see, here's the thing with women. For the most part, and don't use the exceptions, you got to go with the general rule. The general rule is they're going to respond to different men according they're going to respond to different men according to their class, according to their subculture. Like, I never forget when I was uh, doing a... Uh, when I was doing a uh, presentation at this expo, we had a couple golfs in the audience. They look right for each other. That's what they're going to mess with. Or some young ladies I, I know personally, I mean, they heavily tatted, like heavily tatted. Who they deal with, heavily tatted men. You know, so, you know, one of the things is, you, and each one, they're going to act different. But the key, like a key, and this is, well, see, my thing is this. I read the women. Like, I can look at a woman and generally tell what I have to do or whether or not I can actually get with her. Like ratchets, you know, I ain't ratchet enough. Well, some caught up into that whole YouTube, well, social media type of drip or something. I probably ain't, you know, they gonna be like so-so with it, you know, because they really into that image. But when I get to professional types, especially like uh, around 92s, corporate or women who grew up in upper middle class environments, I'm all right with them when I open my mouth. But when I don't, get attention from those working class it's like okay it is what it is but it's understanding they not all the same because one problem a lot of guys got to do out here is they making their determination based on what one woman or a few women because like i said at the beginning most of these guys if you ask them how many women under a lie detector they really even encounter it's not very many It's not very many at all. And that's that's the whole thing. Yeah. Just coming back from the car place, hey there is something done. Those check engine lights. Anyway. Yeah, so let me tell you what. If you're going to be out here, well, first thing, you got to know who you are first. As a man, you got to know who you are before anything else. Because then you got to know, once you know who you are, then you know, like, okay, you can't deal with all these women. And one of the things, and, and I've said this before, a lot of guys, they focus on one set of women, but you probably, that's probably not you anyway. But you got some women out there on some nerdy stuff. I ain't gonna call the young lady's name, but she was on some she was fine as shit. She knows she is. She was fine as shit, but she was on some straight nerdy shit. And you got a whole lot of them. But that's different from like the woman who's on that uh, uh gold digger thing. I'm talking about some sprinkle sprinkle shit. <laughs> Don't get me started. I let that one go because the sprinkle sprinkle lady did dig up me a few years ago, so I said I had to leave it alone for now. For now. Oh man. But um, I'm gonna tell you what though. It depends on where you at, and then once you know where you at, then you know which women to fuck with. You know which women that you either going to entertain. And then you ain't worried about them. Like, all these guys talking about these women on some 304s and high body counts. Man, there's a whole lot of women out here ain't on no damn high body counts. Guys be thinking, like, all these women are fucking. But I want y'all to think about something. 
thing or like that. They want sex, but all of them ain't getting it like that. I want y'all to think about it like that. Okay, first of all, pretty much people agree only a small percentage of men are getting like multiple women. Then you have a whole lot of men who ain't getting shit. Who lonely and shit. So, all these women ain't lined up for just a one man because, well, shit, he still got to work and do shit. And plus, if he get with a seriously fine woman, he might not want it to get with a bunch of women. He going to have some pickiness because, really, guys at the top, well, they're going to be kind of picky about this shit anyway. Oops. Hey, hey, hey. So... That's the whole thing. That is the whole that's that's the whole thing. So you wanna I mean please. Uh, it's always somebody this is a red turn right here. You always gotta watch it even when you drive. But anyway, right. So, you know, you got when you out here, you gotta just understand, first of all, when you start dealing with them, every time you deal with a woman, you can see the similarities between groups, but then you also wanna pay attention to the how they might be dissimilar. And then, you know, different types. Like I said, you got the rich ones, you got the middle class ones, working class ones. You got the ones into some golf or whatever, heavily tattooed ones. You got the herbal tea type of women. I mean, shoot, there's so many groups. And they will, and their strongest attraction is for a guy that is a reflection of who they are. Their strongest. Because I've dealt with, and I say this, and you get some people, they... Like, I talked about this on my Deep Thought channel. Here, some idiot, probably just some troll or something, Megan, like, oh, I don't know what's going on out here. I'm out here, motherfucker. I'm out here now. Hey, if you live, hey, if you live in the Bel Air area, Harford County, let me know where you want to see me out in person. You see me driving around. So I'm out here. I know what's up. And people have been out, uh, been out with me, seen me, seen how I roll. I just see the different things. It could be different cities, shit. Women in one city, you know, women in Miami might respond to men a certain way from different from women in New York. In fact, I've always seen that. I've always seen that. See how the women respond. Because I peeped that years I peeped that years ago, and it's still the case. I say, well shit, these women in Atlanta, different from the ones in DC. Yeah. Between DC and Baltimore, they different. But, you know, then that's the key. That's that's the key and shit. But anyway, I'm going to come in and get some shit. Anyway, though. Yeah. So, anyway, just understand, man. You know, get out of that mode where, you know, you're thinking all these women the same thing. They're going to be different. There's going to be different groups, different tribes. Figure out which, first figure out who you are. Figure out who you are first, and then figure out how they fit into who you are. That's it. That's it. Shit. Shit. Anyway, let me go on in here. Get some stuff, man. Anyway, man, I get back with y'all. Peace and blessings.